Okay, welcome to my series on mechanical engineering thermodynamics. Today, just to start, we're going to talk about um, some topics in thermodynamics, including uh, basic units that we need to know, um, density, and specific volume, and how those two relate. So to get started, let's talk about density, and let's talk about specific volume. So both of these are important thermodynamic quantities that we need to know. For a given substance and a lot of problems that we're going to be working. So first off, density, which we're all probably more familiar with, um, tells us the amount of mass that we have for a given unit of volume. So the formula to remember here is that rho, our density, is going to be equal to our mass of our substance divided by capital V, which are volume. And our units here are in kilograms per meters cubed. Now on the other hand, we have specific volume, which is kind of the reverse of density. It's the reciprocal. Specific volume tells us volume for a given unit of mass. Um, so the formula here is little v, which we're going to use for specific volume, equals capital V for absolute volume over the mass. And we can see that specific volume is the reciprocal of the density. And likewise, density is the reciprocal of specific volume. And the units for our specific volume here are going to be meters cubed per kilogram. Like I said, both of these quantities are going to be important for us in a lot of problems that we're going to work in the course. And they both really depend on the pressure and the temperature of our given fluid. Um, so talking about pressure and temperature, those are two quantities that we're really going to want to know um, well to be successful in thermodynamics. So to start talking about temperature, we first need to address what's known as the zeroth law of thermodynamics. And it's really an intuitive idea. Um, anybody could kind of uh, reason through why this makes sense, um, but we do have to state it. Um, and basically the idea is that the zeroth law tells us that two bodies are in thermal equilibrium when their measured temperatures are equal. So if we have two bodies in contact, Right, heat is going to flow from high heat to low heat until the two reach an equilibrium temperature. That's what the zeroth law tells us. Now, working with temperature, um, we have to be comfortable using a few different scales here. So we have Celsius, we have Kelvin, and then if we're in the United States, we might also need to work with Fahrenheit scale and the Rankine scale. So for, to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, um, we just need to take our temperature in Celsius and add 273.15. And similarly, if we have temperature in Fahrenheit, to convert that to Rankine scale, we simply need to add 459.67. Now, the Kelvin scale and the Rankine scale are absolute temperature scales. So that means that at zero Kelvin or zero Rankine, you're at absolute zero. Whereas for Celsius or Fahrenheit, you could have negative temperature values. Um, and then just a reminder here, this is how we convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We simply multiply our temperature in Celsius by 1.8 and add 32. So then talking about our other major thermodynamic um, quantity, um, pressure. Pressure is a measure of force over a given unit area. So our standard pressure unit is Pascals, um, which is one Newton per meter squared, force over area. And there's a few different pressure units that we're gonna have to use through the, throughout this course. Um, standard is, is kilopascals, KPA, that's equal to 1,000 Pascals. We might also use uh, megapascals, MPA, which is 1,000 kilopascals. And then we also might see this bar unit, which is 100 kPa. So we need to know how to kind of get in between all of these. And then also we might see this um, atmosphere unit as well, which is basically um, atmospheric pressure at sea level, um, which is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. So just to recap, these are some important thermodynamic quantities that we need to be familiar with. Density, specific volume, temperature, and pressure, they're all interrelated. They might be presented in different units, 
different unit systems, but we need to be able to be familiar with working with them and converting between different units. Also, through this course, it's going to be really important that we keep track of our units as we're working a problem. Don't get lazy and forget to mark down which units you're in, as that's when we can make simple mistakes. If we keep track of our units, then we can avoid those simple errors. And also, sometimes we can do basic unit analyses just to derive simple formulas or to confirm the accuracy of a formula or result that we are using. So that's it for today. Next time we're going to talk about some simple pressure concepts.